Well, Sir Ian Wood, who recently led that review of North Sea oil and gas we were hearing about, joins me now from Aberdeen. Sir Ian, thank you uh, for being with us. Is this really a question of argy-bargy, uh, with you saying one thing and the Yes campaign saying another? Or can we say with certainty that there is a limit to the amount of oil which is going to be got out each year going ahead and therefore a limit on the amount of revenue that will come from it? Sure. Well, you, you can't say with certainty because it depends on the price of oil and the range of te technology development. What you can do with all the known facts right now um, between the 12 and 24 billion barrels at the high and the low end, what is the most likely? And, and, and right now, I actually think there's, there's pretty clear accord, um, including um, Alex Almond in, his, in the uh, recent Hollywood debate, acknowledging that the 15 to 16, which is the, the figure that I've suggested, is the figure that Alec Kemp, who's a kind of local guru, has, has suggested, is the right figure, at least up to 2050. Very helpful to BP and Shell, both coming up solidly behind that today and saying that's correct. There's two issues. One is that the 24 billion that the Scottish government keep talking about um, is what is it's, it's a third higher than what we believe is correct. But secondly, and where I think I've made a much more significant contribution to the debate, if you look at depletion, and you covered the, the figures were covered, and you, if you look at depletion over the next 30, 40 years, and, and Scottish independence is forever. So it's not just this generation, it's future generations. Then you are down to 200,000 barrels a day as likely, and I don't think anyone's really disputing that. And on that basis, we don't have any significant oil and gas fiscal income, and therefore the gap has to be made up with by a number of additional elements in the Scottish economy. They've spoken about higher productivity, they've spoken about um, lower unemployment, they've spoken about more manufacturing. That's great, but they are in the realms then of uncertainty um, and, and high risk. And, 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 and frankly, I think, I think Scotland has to think very hard on the basis of its future generation of taking the chance um, that on our own, particularly with the oil industry running down, there's been 180,000 people right now in Scotland employed by oil. So it'll be quite a traumatic rundown um, taking the chance of um, doing it without the kind of wider support of the UK. But you see, uh, I've been speaking to leading nationalist politicians, and one of the things they said to me was well, that man you referred to as their oil guru uh, says that he's identified 99 new wells, and therefore uh, there could be more oil uh, than you're predicting. But you see, I came into this debate because of distortions and inaccuracies. That's a complete spin. Um, Alec Kemp had identified these 99 um, potential possible new discoveries in the last three or four years, and they are built into our figures. The figures we've got just now have got up to five billion barrels of presently unfound oil and gas that we hope to find. That includes the 99 fields, and yet you get this wonderful spin today as if it's all new news and a new bonanza. It's completely misleading the Scottish public. Do we even know whose oil it is? Because there's some suggestion that if you drew the line... Uh, into the oil fields according to geography that actually some of the southerly ones might end up being in the rest of the UK's uh, territory rather than in Scotland's. Is there any truth in that? Well, the concerning thing is there's going to be a massive negotiation take place um, which will be very hotly contested. I can't answer your question because it'll have to be decided by negotiation. But the unfortunate thing there, at a very critical time in the industry, the industry right now is going through a really tough time um, we're talking about a major fiscal review, i.e. more incentives. Uh, my, review, my review came up with a new regulator, with a, a much stronger regulator to get much more collaboration. Um, that negotiation will take place at a very unfortunate um, time, and that won't help. We don't have the answers to that right now. It'll be very, very hard fought. And if, on balance, you had to sum up the mood of uh, the oil community uh, around Aberdeen, on balance, uh, not your opinion, but your assessment of the mood, would you say it's yes or no to independence? I can't answer that question, but what I, what I can answer is, is a more important question in terms of the implications. I mean, it's quite clear both BP and Shell made a comment today um, that they would prefer working within the bigger United Kingdom. That is undoubtedly, I interviewed 60 plus operating companies in, in, over the last 12 months in my maximised recovery view. There's no doubt, not because they've anything against Scotland at all, Scotland's a very pleasant country to do business in, but because they prefer the financial and economic strength of working with the UK. So undoubtedly, um, there is a real concern that if we make the change, then 
we will lose some investment, not just from present operators, but from new operators, and that would be very unhelpful.